Good morning. It is Tuesday, July the 19th, and it is day 10 of our van adventure to Maine. We're going to do a little bit of backtracking to the Outer Banks today because we weren't able to see everything yesterday that we had wanted to see. Our first planned stop is the Monument to the Century of Flight. The second stop is the Wright Brothers National Memorial, which we're excited about knocking off of our bucket list. Then we will head back north today through the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, which is a huge shortcut, and then all the way up to Stockton, Maryland, where we will be boondocking for the night. We began the day with an unplanned stop at Digger's Dungeon, as it was on the highway on our way back to Kitty Hawk. They have the famous monster truck here, Grave Digger, a little area where kids can ride, and also you can go for rides in the big truck for 10 bucks and a diner as well. Our first planned stop of the day was the Monument to a Century of Flight, which was built in 2003. The monument's essential structure consists of 14 wing-shaped stainless steel pylons ascending in height from 10 feet to 20 feet in an orbit of 120 feet, which is the distance traveled by the Wright brothers on that first historic flight in 1903. The flat faces of the pylon showcase black granite panels engraved with language and images about 100 of the most significant accomplishments in aviation in its first century. We found specifically interesting in 1914, the first airline was established in St. Petersburg, Florida, which is where we live now. There we are. This is a replica of what they flew. The first flight, Boulder, marks the liftoff point for each of their flights in 1903. There are four different markers for the first floor flights. The first flight was 12 seconds, 120 feet. The second, 12 seconds, 175 feet. The third, 15 seconds, 200 feet. And significant improvements on the fourth flight, marking 59 seconds and 852 feet. The 60-foot monument atop Kill Devil Hill honors the Wright brothers and marks the site of the hundreds of glider flights that predated the first powered flight. Grass now stabilizes the 90-foot sand dune, which was used at the time. This life-size sculpture recreates that day in December 17, 1903, when the first flight occurred. At 10.35 a.m., they released the restraining wire. The flyer moved down the rail as Wilbur steadied the wings and Orbo left the ground for the first time, and a photographer caught everything on camera. We just paid $21 for six wheels, two axles, and over eight feet high to come across the Chesapeake Bay. There's a ship coming, and we're about to go into the tunnel. 45. Here we go. the busky cider on the bay they're closed today so we didn't get to go but we came here to the gourmet market and they had one of the ciders from down there so Chuck's running everything back to the van so that we can keep walking very cool welcome to the town of Cape Charles public fishing pier This is the beach. We are at the end of the pier. We're out here. And One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen barges out there. Ships. Ships. Here we are at the Cape Charles Brewing Company. We just left town because it was just too dang hot. 
But it's really just the beach and then the one little strip um, that had markets and some restaurants and bars. So we have the gourmet market, a couple other retail stores, and that was good. Chuck found a pocket t-shirt, so he was very happy. But it was super hot, so we're looking forward to having a drink and some air conditioning. So here we are. We're in Stockton, Maryland at a wildlife management property, which is owned by the city, I guess? No, the state. So it's state-owned property. There was a gate and we were worried because there was a gate at the other entrance, but the parking lot here is before the gate. We're heading out this morning from our boondocking spot last night, which was very quiet. And our plan for today is to go kayaking this morning on the Pocomoke River and then head out to see the wild horses on Ossateague Island National Seashore. Then we will go to our boondocking spot for the night in Seaford, Maryland. Here we are on the Pocomoke River, kayaking. Say hi. <laughs> it's turning out to be longer than we thought and a lot of work. But they said two and a half hours, three hours. We were hoping for something more like two hours. But it's fun to the end it was five miles and we're pretty freaking tired it is um 11 36 so two hours we were kicking it five miles in two hours so here's the place where we return it and there's a little bridge there's a drawbridge yeah because we're wondering how this boat got in here so i guess it is a drawbridge um yeah kind of sad shape but cute little town. The people are really nice that we talked to. There's like a big um, cruisy kind of dinner cruise ship over there. A river boat. You think it's a paddle wheel? Oh yeah, we'll have to walk around town a little bit. Operated by request. Oh yeah. With five hours notice. Oh my gosh, you got. You gotta call ahead. There's the van, the parking lot over there. Off the Teague Island National Seashore Visitor Center. Yeah, that would have been good. But that's okay. The guy said we would just see horses. Maybe. Drive across, he said, go right. And before you get to the park, he said you would see them. There's wild horses over there. It's so cool. Let's see if I can get it. Like these people are driving by because they're so used. They've seen so many horses at this point. It's a baby. It's a baby. Oh, there it is. So here we are at the beach. This is the north end. Ossetique Island National Park. Poor wild horses just on the side of the road. Oh, it is the little baby. Hi, horses. So the guy at the kayak place said he came out last week with his friends over here to look at the horses. And there was a horse, and I guess it's mating season, so the stallion was chasing the mare, and he said it was the first time that they ever, like, got so excited they crossed over the bridge to the other side of the island, and they had to be rounded up and brought back. But he said traffic was a nightmare <laughs> because the bridge was blocked with the horses running around chasing each other. Okay, so we're coming down this road, perfectly sunny, not much wind at all and the car in front of us the um one of these trees over here just totally the limb fell off smashed in his front windshield chuck had to like swerve into the other lane because no cars were coming so they pulled over because their front windshield is broken we're coming into ocean city maryland amusement park there's all kinds of Just finished laundry, the not so fun part, and then went out to Ossetique Island, and that was 
awesome. Ocean City, Maryland boardwalk. Straight ahead. There's like no parking here. It's crazy. We're at our boondocking place for the night. Super, super nice couple. And we haven't filled up with water in since we left. This is day 11. And Chuck just filled up with water. And you can see there is a hole in the tank now. It got melted, it hit the exhaust. So yeah, we're kind of thinking that whenever that branch fell and we swerved, he thinks maybe it swerved the enough weight from the tank because we swerved really hard. But he's thinking maybe the weight from the tank pushed it over into the exhaust. But to melt it, it seems like it would take a while. No? It looked... Well, no way it would be rubbed up against it for a long period. But it's not, it was not even close to it before, so... Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on, but... Anyway, we um, hooked up with power for tonight. It's the first time we've had power uh, since probably day two of our trip, because we had power at day two. It was day 12 of our trip and we still had a long way to go to get to Maine. So we decided it was time to hit the highway and put some big mileage on in order to work our way up north. What we did is we left our Boondockers Welcome spot in Seaford, Delaware and headed to a Boondockers Welcome in Chalfort, Pennsylvania. And along the way I didn't make any video. We made quick stops for Philly cheesesteaks around Philadelphia and then we made a Wegmans grocery store stop to buy some specialty items there because we heard it was a really cool store. And we got to our Boondockers welcome spot about 4 p.m. And the people were so nice, they sat in the driveway and talked to us until after 9 o'clock. So we just grabbed a quick bite to eat and then headed off to bed. Tomorrow is a big day for Chuck when we hit one of the first big breweries that he wanted to visit on this van trip to Maine. Treehouse Brewing Company in... Massachusetts.